G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin and I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. I've been living in Australia for over two years and when I moved over here there were things I was never expecting to see, things I was shocked to see, and things that are just only in Australia. So if you want to see my list of 50 things that you will only see in Australia, grab a Becky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. Number one, trains that actually let you change the positions of the seats. Now, I've only seen this in New South Wales, so if you're from other states and territories, let me know in the comments, is this something that is New South Wales exclusive? But it is something so small, so simple, and so ingenious. I really wish the trains back home had this. Number two are electrical outlets that have on and off switches. Again, this is something that is so small but makes so much sense once you actually start using them. I remember in the States constantly having to run around and unplug appliances, especially when it was a thunderstorm because I had relatives who were paranoid about that. But here in Australia, if you're not using an appliance, you just turn it off and can leave it plugged in. It's so convenient. Number three are prices that already include tax. Here in Australia, we pay a goods and sales tax. And all that is included in the price you see, whether you're going clothes shopping, grocery shopping, if you're out at a restaurant, all of that is already the full price. You're not going to be surprised with the sales tax when you go to check out. Number four, you're going to laugh at me for this one, I can tell already, cars that have steering wheels on the other side of the car. Of course, in Australia, they drive on the other side of the road compared to in the States. So naturally, the cars are going to have the steering wheel on the other side. But it took me a couple months after living here to remember which side was the passenger side because I kept accidentally getting into the driver's seat. Number five are L plates and P plates. We have nothing like this over in the States and it's such a great system. It lets cars around you know that somebody is new to driving, they're not quite comfortable yet, and to give them a little bit of space and maybe a little bit of extra grace on the roads, which you don't always see in Sydney regardless of whether you have an L P plate or not. But still, it's nice that externally other drivers are aware that somebody might be having a bit of difficulty on the road. Number six are gum trees. Never saw one before I came here, and you know what? These things are gorgeous and also relatively dangerous because some of them do shed limbs and the limbs are very dense, they're very heavy, they're thick. They can very easily kill somebody. But the trees themselves are absolutely gorgeous and they smell incredible. Number seven is seeing kids wear hats with their uniforms. In a lot of public schools over in the States, uniforms aren't required. But in charter schools or private schools, uniforms are the norm. But I have never seen a uniform that actually required kids to wear hats. I'm sorry, but like if the kids are in kindy or year one, it is like the cutest thing. Number eight are the sports here in Australia, particularly the NRL, the AFL, and cricket. Obviously, cricket isn't exclusive to Australia. Neither is rugby, though. There's rugby league, rugby union, and then you have the Australian Football League, the AFL, which is a little bit similar to rugby, but definitely not rugby, but kind of similar to football I'm used to in the States, but absolutely nothing like football I'm used to in the States. I've still never seen an AFL game and don't quite know how that sport works, but the sports here are very different to the ones that I grew up with back in the States. Number nine are electronic driver's licenses. How ingenious is it to actually have your driver's license as an app on your phone, or at least attached to an app on your phone? You don't have to have the physical license on you. It's just so smart. It's so convenient. I don't know why we don't have something like this over in the States. Number 10 are traffic lights that actually beep at you when it's your turn to walk. Not only is this incredibly helpful if you're visually impaired, but if you're somebody like me who listens to music and kind of wanders off into some sort of daydream la la land when you're walking, it does help to let you know that the light has turned green and you should move. 11 are roundabouts. There are a few of these now, obviously it depends on the state you live in. I lived in a pretty big city. We didn't have roundabouts. I had never seen a roundabout anywhere in the States, but they do exist in some areas. I had never seen one before coming to Australia and they make so much more sense than four-way stop signs. You're less likely to get into an accident. They make people a little bit more cautious and overall, they just make more sense. Number 12, kangaroos. Like, let's face it, it's Australia. Chances are the first time you come over here and you see a kangaroo, they're gonna be roadkill on the side of the road, but it's Australia. You're not gonna see kangaroos anywhere else unless you go to a zoo. 13 are rainbow lorikeets. These are everywhere in my suburb and they are absolutely gorgeous birds. Yes, their chirping can be a little bit annoying first thing in the morning, but you know what, with how absolutely stunning these creatures are, it makes up for the annoyance. 14 are cockatoos. I had only seen these in like a couple random pet stores over in the States and they are everywhere here. Like for them to fly around as a normal wild bird here blew my mind the first couple months I moved over here. Again, they are absolutely stunning, but their noise is not nearly as pleasant as a rainbow lorikeet. And everyone's favorite Australian bird, the bin chicken. 
I had no idea that these things even existed before I came over here, and the first time I saw one, oh my god, I didn't know what to think. <laughs> They're the size of a regular farm chicken. They fly. They have these really long weird beaks. They do eat literal garbage. And they have this weird red scabby thing on the back of their head that kind of looks like somebody hit them upside the head. They're the strangest birds and they are so Australian. 16 is chicken salt. Oh my god, chicken salt is absolutely delicious. I don't know why more places don't have chicken salt. I cannot eat chips without chicken salt anymore. I am addicted to this stuff. Number 17 is chicken flavored chips. I came over here, I would have never expected chicken to be a flavor on a potato chip. But lo and behold they are, and they're probably one of my favorites. 18 is barramundi. It's a very, very popular fish over here. You can see it in restaurants, you can get it in the shops. It's also relatively cheap compared to some other fish that's available. And if it's cooked pretty well, it's delicious. Number 19 are sushi rolls that aren't cut up. You can go to Sushi Hub, which is one of like the largest chain sushi restaurants, and just buy a full size like sushi roll and grab it and go. It's not cut up in like four or eight pieces already for you. I was a little bit surprised when I first saw that, but that's a great snack to just pick up and carry around with you. 20 are meat pies. I know that these are a traditionally English dish, but we don't have them over in the States, or at least they are very tough to find. So seeing them here in the freezer section of a grocery store, seeing them in servo, seeing bougier ones in restaurants, they are everywhere here, and they're so good. Number 21 are musk sticks, and I will be perfectly content if I never have to eat another musk stick in my life. For my Americans watching, it tastes like chalky Pepto-Bismol in some sort of little chalky, like, three-inch long piece of candy. It's not my thing. I know a lot of Aussies grow up with it. They love the taste of it. I cannot stand musk-flavored anything. But it was definitely not something I'd seen until I moved to Australia. 22 are Christmas puddings. This is something that I didn't grow up with over in the States. It's not an American thing at all. In fact, they're actually very tough to find over in the States, and a lot of times you'll have to make them homemade if you want one. Whereas here, they are all over the place right around Christmas. In December, you start seeing like 20 different varieties and different flavors of them. Bakeries sell them. Home cooks sell them. They're just very easy to get and readily available here around Christmas. Number 23 is the Aboriginal flag. I never saw it before I came to Australia. Remember, Australia isn't really that talked about globally, and most countries aren't that talked about over in the U.S. So whenever Australia was brought up, we just saw the classic Australian flag. Before I moved over here, I'd never seen the Aboriginal flag and didn't know what it was. I learned pretty quickly. 24 are different colored Medicare cards. I didn't realize that Medicare cards came in different colors, but when my first one came in the mail and I saw it was blue, I was a little bit surprised considering my husband's is green, and that's when I found out that depending on your status over here, you do get different colored Medicare cards. Greens for citizens. 25 are bills that are paid either weekly or fortnightly. For example, my health insurance is paid fortnightly, my rent is paid weekly. I've never seen bills that were split up like this because over in the States, everything was monthly. The only thing that wasn't was getting paid every fortnight. When it came to actual bills, everything was once a month. Seeing rent here done weekly, health insurance done weekly or fortnightly or monthly, depending on how you want to have that set up, and it was just a surprise to see. Along with that is getting paid monthly. Like, I've never been in a job over in the States where I got paid once a month, and since moving over here, I've worked with the same employer and get paid once a month. Which, when you're a dual-income household, is not bad, but if you're on your own, it kind of sucks a couple days before payday when you're pretty much completely out of money because you've budgeted as much as you can for the month and always unnecessary stuff pops up. 27 are mixed drinks in a can. And these are starting to become more popular over in the States. But when I moved here over two years ago, there are very, very few mixed drinks. Over here, they are abundant. In fact, I still have a couple from Boxing Day that Mark and I haven't touched in like two months. Not because we're not drinking, but just because I keep forgetting to put them in the fridge and I don't want to drink a warm JD and Coke. 28 is Red Rooster. Very, very popular fried chicken chain over here in Australia. Never saw them before I came over here. They're not bad. Personally, I like them a little bit more than KFC, but it's also not going to be the best fried chicken ever. 29 is Hungry Jack's, which, yes, is basically the same thing as Burger King over in the States, but I never saw the name before, and there are some different things that they have on the menu over here, which is interesting. 30 are Krispy Kreme stores everywhere. Let me tell you, when I was in the States where I lived, there were two Krispy Kreme stores near me, and by near me, I mean they were within a 20-minute drive. 
Here you can get Krispy Kreme donuts at 7-Elevens. They've got stands everywhere. They've got shops everywhere. They're in basically every train station. 31 is money that's different colors. I came from the US, guess what? All of our bills were green. Here in Australia, not only is the money different colors, but it's also different sizes depending on the denomination of the bill. Which is genius for people who are colorblind or people who are visually impaired. The 32 is one and two dollar coins. Again, pretty ingenious considering how much um, inflation is bumping up a lot of prices. And some days one or two dollar coins really do feel like it's practically nothing in this economy. 33 are light-up Christmas kangaroos. I think these are so cute. I mean, I've never seen them before I came over here. We had like light-up Christmas deer, reindeer. I saw penguins, I saw polar bears over in the States, but never a light-up kangaroo. And I'm obsessed. I want one one year for Christmas. We just don't have a nice enough front yard to put one in. 34 are sausage sizzles slash snags. They sell snags at a sausage sizzle. Anyway, if you're Australian, you know what I'm talking about. These happen every single Saturday at Bunnings. They sell snags and they're actually really good. Meanwhile, there is nothing like that over in the States. I think if you handed somebody a sausage between a piece of white bread over in the States, they would look at you like you've lost your mind. 35 is kangaroo pet food. Now I have two cats and a dog and all of our pets get food that has some sort of kangaroo flavor to it. That's what they like. But that is not something I ever saw in the States and blew my mind when I first saw it here. 36 are blue tongue lizards. I'm sad because I've only seen two of them since I moved over here. One was my very first week over here and I was just walking down the street and it just walked right in front of me. Okay, I'm in Australia, that's brand new. And the second one was roadkill, which is really sad because there aren't that many of them in this area anymore. But these fat, adorable lizards do in fact have blue tongues, hence the name, and were something I had never expected to see until I moved to Australia. Number 37 is long service leave. Can I tell you just how great the concept of long service leave is? If you don't know what that is, if you work for an employer for 10 years, you're entitled to three months of paid vacation time off. You can just take a three month holiday if you work for the same company for 10 years and still get paid and still have a job to come back to. On top of that, here in Australia, you get four weeks of paid holiday time. And I know a lot of Aussies who actually complain because it's lower than a lot of other OECD countries, but in the States, paid vacation time isn't mandatory. When I left my old company, I had three weeks and that was a lot of time for some people. My mom's worked at the same company for over 20 years and she still only gets two weeks of paid time off in the States. A 39 are council rubbish bins. Over in the States, it is so different depending on where you live. And where I lived in Philly, you had to buy your own trash cans. You go to Home Depot, you go to Lowe's, you pick out whatever size you need. And if you needed recycle bins, you had to go to a specific place to pick up just recycle bins. But the fact that they are council bins, they're all the same shape, the same size, they just have different lids depending on what's inside them. For us, red is garbage and yellow is recycling, and I think green is organics and compost. But that's such a smart idea, you don't have to go out and buy your own bins. You do have to pay a fee to the council. Number 40 are beware of snake signs. Let me tell you, the first time I saw one, it was spray painted on the ground and it scared the hell out of me. I've been in Australia for like two weeks and I had no idea because I thought all snakes were like deadly, venomous, scary Australian snakes. While it's not the case, if there are beware of snake signs, chances are the snakes that are in that area are the dangerous, deadly, venomous ones. So if you see a sign here that says beware of snakes, take it seriously. Actually, if you see a sign here that says beware of any animal, croc, shark, snakes, take it seriously. On 41, lifeguards pulling people out of the water after a shark sighting. This was Christmas 2022. Mark and I went to the beach, we were swimming for about 20 minutes, and then the lifeguards just started rounding everybody up and telling them to get out of the water. Because it turns out that there was a tiger shark sighting really, really, really close to where we were swimming. Never happened to me before over in the States. I've never heard of it happening to anybody over in the States, but that is a thing that's happened to me here in Australia. 42 are gambling slash pokey machines in a pub. Over in the States, you would never find gambling in a pub. That is not a thing that you will see. The closest thing are like casinos in Vegas or casinos anywhere, but definitely not in just the average corner pub will you see pokey machines set up over in the States. Kind of blew my mind a little bit when I walked in and found like gambling machines right by the bar. Was not expecting that at all when I first came over here. 43 are cafes with no tip jars. Everybody knows that here in Australia, tipping is not really a thing. Whereas over in the States, tipping is expected. Whether you're a waiter, a waitress, a barista, a cafe owner, tipping is everywhere in the States. So walking into cafes here and not seeing physical tip jars, 
was actually such a relief. Sorry for the sudden lighting difference, you guys. Battery died. Next up on this list is rent that $600 a week. Again, kind of leading a little bit into my point before about paying bills weekly here, but $600 is like on the low end all the way out here in Western Sydney. Like I'm not close to the nice bougie areas in the CBD. No, I am way, way out there. And $600 a week is starting to be on like the low end around here. Whereas before in the States, pre-COVID, like cup about a year before COVID. I was paying $600 a month for one room. Now granted, we're talking American dollars, so that would have been like 900-ish dollars Australian. But still seeing rent go up so much and seeing it paid weekly here is a shock when you come to Australia. We're 45 or deadly spiders. I've seen deadly spiders over here. I've seen red belly, no, not, red belly blacks are the snakes. Redbacks, that's what they're called. I've seen redbacks over here in Australia. And I thought people were exaggerating when they said, oh yeah, you'll see deadly animals over here once in a while. Yeah, you will, because I saw them just a couple weeks after I moved here. Number 46 are cardboard voting booths. In the States, there are kind of different ways to vote. A lot of people use voting machines. But seeing cardboard voting booths in the local schools and stuff where you vote kind of blew my mind. When they had the whole voice referendum thing back in October, I went with Mark to see kind of what the inside of these voting places looked like. And there was cardboard everywhere. Was definitely not expecting that whatsoever. Oh, number 47 are two and three bedroom, multi-million dollar houses. Now, don't get me wrong, houses in the States are getting expensive, but if you're paying a million dollar house, you're probably gonna get like a five or six bedroom house in most places. Unless you're living in some place like Manhattan. But here, it's actually becoming a lot more common to see two and three bedroom houses going for multi-million dollar, depending on the area that you're buying it. If you want to buy anything within like the local CBD-ish area of Sydney, yeah, you're forking out millions of dollars for a two or three bedroom flat or house. Number 48 are posties on motorbikes. And this is really, really smart depending on the setup of your neighborhood or your suburb. Because if you have a mailbox that's right at the footpath, Posty can literally just pull up, drop it off, and keep riding. Over in the States, I used to feel so bad because those postal service workers, man, they would get a workout in, especially when it was hot, or especially when it was raining or snowing. I mean, hiking up and down everybody's steps to slip mail into a mailbox that's, like, screwed into the side of the wall of their house. Like, you had to be fit to be a postal service person over in the States. Here, you have to have a license to ride a motorbike. Number 49 are Easter shows. A lot of the big cities do Easter shows, obviously right around Easter. These are, on the one hand, a lot of fun, really, really pricey, but I had never seen anything like an Easter show over in the States. It is so interesting because it's like a carnival meets a horticultural show meets the games that you would see on like the boardwalk in New Jersey. It's fun, it's a good time, and Mark and I have gone every year, and you know what? It's a little tradition that I've absolutely loved since moving over here. And number 50 to tie into the Easter shows are show bags. This is something that was so bizarre to me when I saw it because people were getting so excited over these and I couldn't understand why people were getting excited over kind of overpriced bags with candy or novelty toys stuffed into it. But people go crazy for show bags over here, especially at the Easter shows. They are such a huge draw in. And I saw nothing like that ever over in the States. So that's it for this video, you guys. 50 things I didn't see until I moved to Australia. Did anything on this list surprise you at all? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for the support. I really do appreciate it. And if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. I really, really do appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.